Last week, more than 11,000 television and film writers went on strike for the first time in 15 years. So this move came following a breakdown in negotiations between the Writers Guild of America and the Hollywood Studios. Joining us now to talk more about this writer strike is the filming program manager for the city of San Diego, Guy Langman. Uh, Guy, thanks so much for joining us here Absolutely. to help us understand. Now we're more than a week into it, so we you know want to understand exactly what's happening. Tell us who's involved in the writer strike and exactly you know what kind of impact it might have here in San Diego, if at all. Sure. So you obviously have the writers. Guild. Guild of America, which is the uh, union and guild for the writers. Uh, you know, Hollywood is considered a union town, so all of your major jobs have union guilds. Mm -hmm. uh, then you have the uh, Association of Motion Picture and Television Producers. That's essentially the bargaining guild of the studios and the major production companies that are housed at the studios. Every three, four, five years, they renegotiate contracts. Uh, that talk about minimum hours, minimum amount of writers in writers' rooms, residuals, and such. Um, the last time they struck in 2007, 2008, there was no such thing as streaming. Mm -hmm. the, the first streaming shows on Netflix and Amazon started in 2013. So really what we're seeing is a complete change in the landscape of the entertainment industry. I equate this to kind of like when they introduce sound into motion pictures. It's that kind of groundbreaking change that we're seeing in the industry. So what you're saying is that the demands are different even this time around. Ab absolutely. The demands talk about residuals and writers rooms because when you look back at how TV was in 2007, 2008, you had shows that had 22, 28 episodes. Mm. Now with streaming, 8 to 12 episodes. And writers are not working as much or maybe they're under exclusive um, deals with certain studios so they can't work on other shows. So it's all about that plus the residuals that they'd earn from streaming, be it in international markets or on other streaming services. So for example, let's say somebody writes Seinfeld, yep. on Seinfeld for example, and they make money for the show being on NBC, then the show is sold to TBS or to another right. network. They, they keep on making money, is that right? right? Yeah, that's but that's absolutely. not happening because... It's, it's not happening because the, the, uh, the studios and the streaming services are essentially hoarding their content mm. now. So you write for Netflix and it stays right. on Netflix. It stays on Netflix, so the way the deals are written, they may not see those residuals if they were to sell it to, say, a Warner or a Disney mm -hmm. to be viewed on there. And so the entire business model and the structure of it has completely changed. So they're also looking to the future to think about 2007, they couldn't have necessarily foreseen streaming right. the way it is. Now they're looking to the future and saying, wait, AI is a thing now. Absolutely, right? and that's, that's a huge part that I don't think is getting as much play. You have to look at the studios with AI. You could sit there and a studio could, could have the AI program look at all of their catalog of movies and TV shows. What were the good ratings? What were the things people liked? And it can go and data mine that so the AI knows what is a hit and what to write. Mm. So that's a big sticking point for the Writers Guild is how is this technology going to be used? Is it going to, are they going to get screen credits? How does this work? And, and that's a real big issue that isn't quite as highlighted in a lot of the reporting. Guy, talk a little bit about when the last time they did strike happened and, and obviously how long that lasted. Uh, and how long do we expect this to last sure. this time around? So the last strike, 2007, 2008, started around November uh, and ended in January, February, about three to four months. It was about 100 days. Uh, I believe the economic impact to the state of California was a loss of over a billion dollars. Um, and and that's, that's just the start of it because you not only have the writers and the, and the studios not having their shows, but you have hundreds of below the line workers mm -hmm. who when a show is right. shut down, they're not working, they're not paying their mortgage, they're not going to the grocery store. Um, so you have all of that. I don't think that this is gonna be resolved quickly because the studios currently are in negotiation with the Directors Guild of America for their new deal and then next month SAG-AFTRA. So the studios really don't see any need to cave to the writers right now knowing that these other negotiations are going on and they may use those negotiations as leverage and studios knew these negotiations were coming up months ago mm. and have been building the reality and and catalogs of other tv shows and movies in preparation for so this have long-term effects in that respect that they go in a different direction let's talk about where we are so it's may right now yep. all the shows that were going to air on broadcast tv generally have been shot and are, are already set to go what about the future what kind of shows might we miss out on obviously the late night shows uh, saturday night live right. type shows what are we uh, not seeing i would say a lot of the shows those streaming shows that might be popular, be it a Lord of the Rings or a Star Wars sort of thing. A lot of them shoot in the UK and this week a lot of those showrunners in solidarity have stopped going to work. Once you start stop, uh, stop the writers rooms in that process, a show like say a Game of Thrones spinoff 
that maybe was going to be slated for mid-2024, mm. it might not be till 2025. So there is this trickle down that these shows that you anticipate coming won't be coming anytime soon. Yeah, before we let you guys, I want to ask you real quick, if it's okay, about you know San Diego specifically. Yeah. Do we, we have much shot that is shot here? Are we pursuing we, more big we shot are here? Actually how does it affect us there? 25 to 30 percent over last year for filming. Mm -hmm. We are a hotbed for reality filming, especially romantic reality shows, um, <laughs> and then commercials. Um, before the strike, LA was oversaturated with filming. We started to see the spillover of what couldn't fit there, and now we're getting more and more of that. We're currently positioning ourselves, reaching out to the studios, reaching out to location managers and productions in Hollywood, setting ourselves up for when this strike ends, it's going to be like a land rush of everybody looking for locations. And we're making sure they know that San Diego's got the best beaches, mm -hmm. the best parks, we have great vibe, and that they should come down here and check us out. Just ask Tom Cruise. Yeah. Absolutely. Incentive. <laughs> this is how this goes. Yeah. That's All right. great. Guy, All thank right, you guy, so much. Thank you so much. Appreciate the insight. Great insight and uh, help us understand uh, a big issue obviously it's affecting us all when it yep. comes to uh, entertainment and, and uh, that sort of thing. If you want to follow the most recent updates on the writer's strike, we have that for you on our website, fox5sandiego.com.